and welcome to lesson 18.4 in the Atlas tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to continue uh, with the mouse tracking theme that we have in the lesson 18 series. But uh, thus far we've been tracking the position of the mouse on the screen and tracking where a user clicks. But one of the things that a lot of games use is hover effects or uh, mouse over tracking. So that the mouse causes the program to react whether or not you hit the button. You, know, you see this a lot of times, for example, if you hover over a hyperlink on a website and it automatically turns bold or it underlines or the mouse cursor changes to uh, from an arrow to a finger, you haven't actually clicked anything but the mouse is aware that it's over a hyperlink. We're going to add that functionality to Alice so that our program can react not only to mouse clicks, but also mouse over events, so that maybe it can print an appropriate message when you're hovering over something important, or highlight an object that is clickable when that object is moused over. There's a lot of different functionality you can add to your programs with these techniques. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 18.4, which is mouse over and hover event tracking in Alice. Okay, so here we are in a brand new Alice Grass world, but uh, before we get started, similar to what we did in the previous, uh, in Lesson 18.1, we're going to have to create a billboard to help us provide an example of mouse over. So open up a copy of Microsoft Paint or some other graphic editing program, and let's make the billboard we're going to use for this example. Okay, so here we are, we have Paint open, and in the last series we just needed four quadrants. For this tutorial, I want nine quadrants. Um, in addition to looking at mouse over mechanics, we also want to take a look at how to find regions that are in the center of the screen. So I'm going to draw a five region, or a, a nine region graphic this time, kind of like a, maybe a tic-tac-toe board. So we'll do something like, like that right there. That, that should be about right for us. Um, and we'll make sure that we number each one and that will help our example be a little bit more solid. So let's uh, put in a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now that we have this graphic saved, go ahead and, uh, or save this graphic and we'll head back over to Alice and import it as a billboard into our world. Now that we're back in Alice, let's get that billboard we just made going. And before we do that, I'm going to delete the ground out of this world by right-clicking on it and clicking Delete. And then I also want to make this a black background, so I'm going to go to the World Properties and set the Atmosphere Color to black. Then we'll go ahead and hit File, Make Billboard, and locate the nine quadrant graphic we just made. And you can see I've got it here in my Alice directory. So let's import our nine region graphic, have it turn to face the camera. So method, turn to face camera. And now that we have it facing the camera, let's position it so that it's, it takes up a majority of the screen. So I think something like that will work pretty good. So get that billboard image imported and center it on your screen here. Once you have it set up like that, we can start to work with the mouse over mechanics. Of course, in order to get this working, we're going to need a mouse tracking method. Now this mouse tracking method is gonna be the exact same that we created in the basic mouse uh, tutorial, but let's go ahead and build that just in case you're unfamiliar. I'm gonna to go to my world methods and I'm gonna create a new method called mouse tracker. I'm also going to need a couple variables. So in world, I'm going to go to property and create an X variable. That's going to be a numeric variable and the starting value is unimportant since that will change right away. And I'm going to create a Y variable, which is also a numeric variable and have a placeholder value of one. Now what I want to happen is in a do together block, I'm going to have X set its value to and we'll use one as a placeholder, though we'll be changing that in a moment. And Y, also with a placeholder value of one. Then, instead of having X and Y equal to one at all times, we'll go to World Functions, scroll down until we find Mouse Distance from Left Edge, that will become the X value, and Mouse Distance from Top Edge will become the Y value. 
Now if we do this right, we can watch both the X and Y, create a new event, select when the world starts, and then right click on it and change it to while the world is running. And let's link this to the mouse tracker event so that it will run pretty much the entire time the program is running. If you have both your variables watched, we can hit play and we can see, let's see, let's get that running. Window is a little bit small, there we go. So you can see our world, we have our nine quadrants up and over here I am getting a successful mouse tracking from Alice. So that's a pretty good start to the program right there. We have our billboard imported and we have a mouse tracking method that's tracking our mouse movements. The next thing that we're going to need in this world is going to be an object and we're going to add an object from the shapes category. And th there's a number of different ways to do this. You don't necessarily need shapes. You could probably do this with another billboard. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cube. I just want something with a square face. So I'm going to add this to the world. I want this to be green in color. So I'm going to change my cube to be green. And I want it to be semi-transparent. So I'm going to use an opacity value of eh, 30 or 40 percent. Let's see. 40% is what I'm going to end up going with. And now I'm going to adjust this so that it's showing through the billboard. Because what I'm really looking for is I want to create um, kind of a highlighted region over five. And that's probably about good. Now, in a real scenario, I might spend some time and create a billboard and tweak this so that it's taking up the entire region five. But for right now, this will suit our purposes. So you can see we kind of have this green highlight around five. Now I want this to disappear. So I'm going to set the is showing property to false and I'm going to rename my cube highlight five. And this will just be, uh, my cue to remember that I do have an object that can highlight block number five once I get this code going. Next, when I hit play, I need two bits of information to track a region that's in the center of the screen. So five is in the center of the screen. In order to successfully tr track this region, I need the X and Y coordinate for the top left and bottom right. So if I move my mouse here, I see that the top is 258, 166. So my X coordinate is 258 and my Y coordinate is 166 for the top left. Likewise, if I go to the bottom right, I need to write down the coordinates here as well. So I've got 751 and 448 as my X, Y coordinate for the bottom right. It's a good idea to write these down just uh, maybe on a scratch piece of paper. If you're following along, chances are that these numbers are going to be different than what's on your screen because it's dependent on your resolution and your screen size. So if you're following along and use these numbers, you might not get the same result. You need to find out what the X and Y coordinate for the top left and the lower right are for your particular screen. Once you have those X, Y coordinates written down, we can start to build into this mouse tracking method a way for us to track region number five. Before we continue in this program, let's head over to Paint and take a look at our nine quadrant graphic so you can see why the check we're about to make is going to work. Now that we're here in Paint, you can see that I've put the coordinates that we just found kind of built into this graphic. And I said we need four bits of information for regions that are centered in the screen. We need the top left XY coordinate and the lower right XY coordinate. Now here's why. First, let's go ahead and deal with the X coordinate. We need to make sure that the X value is greater than 258. That is, it needs to be the right of this line right here. So if X is greater than 258, I know the mouse cursor is in regions 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, or 9, or somewhere over on this side of the screen. Then I need to make a second check on the X variable to make sure that it's lower than 751. If it's lower than 751, let's change our arrow pointing, I know it's going to be to the left of this line right here. So not only do I need the minimum x value, but I also need the maximum x value. If x is greater than 258 and less than 751, then I know it's located somewhere here in this column, either 2, 5, or 8. 
Of course, I'm not done yet. I need to check both the extremes of the y variable. So the first thing that I would check is, is y greater than 166, knowing that the further down I go, the more y will increment. So if y is greater than 166, then I know it has to be below this line right here. And then I'll check to see if it's greater than 448. If it's greater than 448, then the mouse coordinate or the mouse cursor has to be ab above the 448 line. And so I end up with a graphic that looks like this and it's kind of confusing. But through the series of four checks, if all four of those are true at the same time, then the only place the mouse cursor can be is in region number five. If I'm over here in region number six with my mouse cursor, I've got both my Y checks being true. My mouse is greater than 166, and it is less than 448, and my mouse is greater on the X coordinate than 258, but it's not less than 751. So if all four of these checks aren't true, I'm not in region number five. And you can repeat this process for any region, large or small, that you want to check. If I wanted just to check, you know, maybe this region right here, this five region, I would just find what the X coordinate and Y coordinate for this top left, and what the X and Y coordinate for this bottom right section are, and change these numbers accordingly, knowing that all four have to be true in order for my mouse to be in a certain region. So with that kind of explained, let's go back and apply that to our Alice world. Now that I'm back in Alice, I'm going to build that check that we just discussed in Paint into my mouse tracking method. I'm going to do this through an if check and just put a placeholder value of true here. Now this is going to run upwards of 30 to 60 times per second because it's running as part of this mouse tracker method that's always active while the world is running. The one thing that I do want to do is make sure that I have a duration of zero seconds. Now it does default to false seconds, but just to make sure that I'm on the right page, I always uh, have a habit of doing this, though I don't think it's necessary. So that happens instantaneously. It's going to happen over zero seconds. Now I told you we need to make four checks. We need to make sure that four things are true. The easiest way to do this, I found, is to put the placeholders in before adding numbers. So I know if true is a placeholder. I'm going to click on the little arrow next to true, select logic, and do true and true as a placeholder. So we'll say both true and true, and there's our two checks right there. Using the arrow on the right-hand side again, I'm going to add another logic, true and true and, and put in a third placeholder of true. And then you guessed it, one more time, click on the arrow on the right, go to logic, true and true and true, and of course, true. This gives us four placeholders for us to make our check. Now we're going to put some values in there. But for right now, this is kind of the easiest way for me to keep this straight in my head. Now, let's enter our two X checks and our two Y checks. So going up to the world, I'm going to select my X value. And the first thing that I'm going to check in this first true is X greater than 258. That's my smallest X value that still can contain region 5. Then I'm going to check is X less than or equal to, and 751 was my value there, so I'm going to say 751. So right here, this line was line 258, this line right here was 751, and by making this check just by itself, I can make sure that my mouse is between 258 and 751, somewhere in this column that contains 2, 5, and 8. Then I'm going to check my Y value, and see, is Y greater than 166. And I, I use greater than or equal to, but it really won't matter for what we're doing here. So is y greater than 166? And last, is y less than 448? So less than or equal to 448. If all four of these things are true together, then I know my mouse is in region number five. If my mouse is in region number five, then I want highlight number five is showing to be set to true over a duration of zero seconds, because I want this all to happen as instantaneously as possible. If my mouse isn't in this region, that is if all four of these checks aren't true, 
Then I want the is showing property set to false over a duration of zero seconds. This will have the effect of turning it off whenever my mouse is in the wrong section. So let's go ahead and run this world and see how it works. When I hit play, see my mouse is not in region number five, so nothing's going on. As soon as my mouse hits region number five, you can see that my region is highlighted. And this happens almost instantaneously. So even though I'm not clicking, Alice is intelligent enough with the method we've written to tell whether my mouse is simply hovering over region number five. This works really well when you're trying to make games, um, maybe like a seek and find game or a Where's Waldo game, where you want information on the screen to be highlighted. Now, since we're working with individual pixels here, this can be a really just teeny tiny small region if that's what works for your program. And you can use this technique on any billboard. So if you have a highly detailed billboard that you import into your world, using this method, you can highlight little small chunks of it. So in its simplest terms, that's how you do a check for a mouse over. This mouse tracker method is always aware of where the mouse is on the screen and pairing it with this if check that has four points that it's checking, we can find certain regions on the screen. So that right there is going to do it for lesson 18.4. There's still a couple other things that I want to do with this uh, mouse over and hover event lesson, but we're going to continue that in lesson 18.5. So in lesson 18.5, we'll just go ahead and continue what we made here um, and just assume that everybody's got the nine quadrant tracker that can find region number five. We're going to use some 3D text to uh, change using the exact same theory that we used for the highlight box, uh, we're going to use 3D text to inform the user whether or not they're highlighting over a certain region. And maybe we'll use a different region than region number five. That will also give you a chance to practice putting in four XY coordinates instead of just two, which can be tricky at first, but it does get really much easier. So thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments and I will certain help, certainly help you out any way that I can. Uh, until next time, have a great day.